Starting us off at number 10, we have the U-2 spy planes. I know, I know, we just want to get to the alien stuff, but in order to get there, we need to go through the weird human stuff first. So, Area 51 is commonly a place of suspicion, with many thinking that there is proof of aliens and alien tech that lives there. But, once the top secret area was finally recognized in 2013, it was released to the public that it is actually a top secret US Air Force base, where they test tons of new and not yet released aircrafts. One of those aircrafts being the U-2 spy plane. The U-2 spy plane was first created to keep an eye on the Soviet Union, as the US was worried about a nuclear threat. This plane is known to fly higher than 70,000 feet with a top speed of 805 miles per hour. The idea was that if this plane could soar so high up and at top speeds, it would be less noticeable than other spy planes at the time. It also didn't need to refuel until after 3,000 miles or so. Flight tests began at Area 51 on August 1st, 1955, after a short eight months of construction. The project was known as Project Aquatone. Sounds like a skin treatment. The defense contractor Lockheed Martin built the first plane on a $22 million budget, which is about $207 million today. Even though this plane was crazy expensive, one was actually shot down over Soviet airspace in 1960. Both the pilot and the planes were retrieved, but forced the US to admit that they were spying. So what happened next? Well, the SR-71 Blackbird. That's right, coming in at our number 9 spot, we have the SR-71 Blackbird, the plane that was to make up for the US Air Force's previous failure. Pressure was on the Lockheed Martin team after the U-2 was shot down. They were to create an entire new plane that could not be shot down and fully operational in 20 months. In case you don't know this, that is an extremely difficult task. The Blackbird finally began testing on December 22, 1964, and it featured tons of new tech. Aircraft design Kelly Johnson said everything had to be invented. Everything. It was known to many as the perfect spy plane. It could fly up to 80,000 feet high and also had a top speed of 2100 miles per hour. That's a freaking huge jump from the U-2. Many at the time believed that the remains of the Roswell crash in 1947 were actually being kept at Area 51. And don't worry, settle down, I'll get there. But because this was during the Cold War, the CIA actually encouraged the myth that aliens were flying around Area 51 so that the Soviets wouldn't know about their newest weaponized toy. But of course, that wasn't the last of their super cool high tech toys. At number 8 we have the A-12 ox cart. This was another plane that was in development at the same time as the Blackbird and was in the running to be the new recon spy plane, but the Blackbird won on that one. The other difference was that the A-12 ox cart had a crew of one and it was operated by the CIA and not the US Air Force who could fit a crew of two in the Blackbird. Later testing proved that the CIA Air Force didn't want to go through the development of this aircraft, so the A-12 slowly morphed into the Blackbird and even the later plane known as the Interceptor YF-12. The Cart, however, was smaller than the Blackbird and faster and could reach higher altitudes, but it was still not the winner in this scenario. It could reach heights of up to 90,000 feet and a top speed of 2208 miles per hour. These craft only operated from 1967 to 68, which is no wonder why most people forget about this one. Or maybe. We were forced to forget about it. It's a conspiracy, man. At number 7, we have the M21 and D21 tag board. Originally known as the Q12, this craft was originally intended to be expendable. The name was later changed to D21 tag board because it was carried on the back of the A12 launch vehicle designated at M21. M stood for mother and D stood for daughter. Then the project was given the name tag board. The D21A was built with titanium and various radar absorbing plastic composites and looked like a stovepipe with a cone in its inlet. The D-21 could fly up to speeds of 1700 miles per hour at an altitude of 95,000 feet. It also had a 3,450 mile range before it needed to refuel. That's pretty impressive. The M-21 was a two seat version of the A-12, but unfortunately these tag team drone planes had a bit of an accident. During a flight on July 30th, 1966, a D-21 collided with an M-21 on release, destroying both crafts. Both crewmen were able to be ejected in time, falling to the sea, but one of them tragically drowned after his pressure suit leaked. The D the 21 drone was then later replaced by the KH-11 Keyhole Reconnaissance Satellite. At number 6 we have everyone's favorite new toy, drones! Ok, I don't actually mean the US Air Force is testing all those tiny little remote controlled toys that we all buy online, but it is believed that the new hangar being built in the same place where the A-12 ox cart was tested is actually home to a fleet of new unmanned drones that are just waiting to be taken for a test fly. Test drive? You know, it doesn't matter, you get the point. A quartet of modern hangars divided into two separate buildings measuring 
90 feet wide are known to be the hangars number 20 to 23 and have been seen going through some pretty major upgrades. Upgrades for what? Probably these drones. These drones are known more professionally as unmanned combat air vehicles, UCAVs for short. Many theorize that the extension and building of this new hangar in the southern ramp area of the base will house large numbers of these craft, keeping them secret and covered up from overhead spies. Inclement weather, and of course our friends above us, the aliens. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have trespassing humans. This one should be an obvious one because I'm sure we all remember the Storm Area 51, they can't stop all of us raid back in September of 2019, which definitely didn't go as planned. This was a Facebook event that over 2 million people responded to going, as well as 1.5 million responded with interested. Obviously, because of all the alien rumors, myths, and legends, just about every single day tourists can be seen trying to get as close as they possibly can to the top secret base. Although the closest people can get is to the gates, which are still miles away from the actual base. Clearly, at least 2 million people thought that if they all band together, then they could storm past the gate, run a few miles, and reach the ultimate destination of Area 51, emphasis on thought, because on the actual day of the event, only about 150 people showed up and none of them got in. Shocker. I remember the day I came across this event and I laughed my butt off because this was before it made international headlines and I thought it was pretty cool. And I think I even actually responded as going because I thought it was just so freaking funny. But anyway, I never had any real intentions of going because of our number four spot. That's right, coming in at number four, we have camo dudes. All over and around Area 51, you can see camo dudes guarding the gates, viewpoints, and other mildly unprotected entrance and vantage points. These scary and intimidating camo dudes ride around in pure white jeeps, making their presence known to any and all who dare to get close to the top secret base. At the two entrances of Area 51, huge and important signs can be seen stating that there is absolutely no trespassing. And if you have the inkling to do so, let it be known that these camo dudes have clearance to use lethal force. That's right. They will shoot at you, and what's the point in finding the answer to are we alone in the universe if you die immediately right after? Or even dying without the getting the answer. That's even worse. These camo dudes have also been known to have the ability to listen in on whoever is near the gates, and when tourists ask themselves, Hey, uh, I wonder if they, uh, if they will wave to us. They immediately give back a nice little wave, confirming that you are being watched and listened to. So, tread carefully. Starting us off in our top three spot, at number three, we have UFOs. That's right, no duh. Due to all the top secret flight testing that they do in and around the top secret base, many have found secret little vantage points to camp out and see if they spy anything. With some luck, many have reported seeing UFOs and strange lights above the airbase at night, and many don't believe them to be human and technology. Not only have there been reports of strange lights and UFOs above the base, but even in the state of Nevada, there have been countless eyewitnesses to strange things and objects in the sky. I mean, that only makes sense, as Nevada is home to the extraterrestrial highway, which of course was created due to all the alien lore surrounding the area. But many bars, restaurants, cafes, gift shops, all of those things all go along with the theme and also believe for themselves that aliens are indeed real and are indeed here. At number two, we have spacecrafts. Actual alien spacecrafts. Oh my god! Back in 1942 in Roswell, New Mexico, a devastating crash apparently took place on the night of July 8th. The Roswell Army Airfield reported that they recovered a flying disc from the scene, only to retract their statement soon after, reporting that it was actually just a crashed weather balloon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Since this incident, many have gone on record saying that the famous picture of Jesse A. Marcel posing with the weather balloon debris was indeed faked. That that was what they were asked to report on after the top secret government officials confiscated the actual crash debris and were never seen of again. It is now popular belief that not only was the craft confiscated and brought into a top secret high government hands, there was also three human shaped bodies. Notice the wording, human shaped but not human. Hmm. Due to all of its top secret mythos, many believe that once Area 51 was built in 1955, that's where all of the evidence from Roswell, New Mexico now rested. Of course, there's no way to prove it unless we get in there, and by the way, I also recently learned that there are even secrets and truths kept from the freaking president. So don't count on getting close to any of that info anytime soon. But wait, back up, Dewey, did you say three human-shaped bodies were recovered? Does that mean... Yup. 
Finally, coming in at our number one spot, and the most shocking and obvious thing on our list is actual aliens. Back in 1995, footage of an alien autopsy supposedly at Area 51 was released thanks to London based video entrepreneur Ray Santilli. This footage caused an international sensation and was shown on television networks all over the world. Santilli later in 2006 admitted that the film was a reconstruction, which, <laughs> no duh. But do we really think the government and the men in black would really let the new News channels all around the world show an alien autopsy? I don't think so. But that being said, Santilli said the footage was reconstructed, as in that there is actual footage of this autopsy, and whoever created this widely released tape was actually recreating an event that actually happened. To the best of my knowledge, there is no hard proof that this footage exists out there, but it wouldn't matter anyway because most of it is supposedly lost. All I know is that three human shaped bodies were recovered from Roswell and that can mean a lot of things. Whether they're at Area 51 or not, I think they're here. Starting us off at our top 10 spot is hazardous working conditions. Back in the 1990s, a lawyer from George Washington University named Jonathan Turley was contacted by a group of people who claimed to work at Area 51. They were in need of Turley's lawyer skills because they believed they were exposed to hazardous materials while working in the top secret base. In an article in the Los Angeles Times, Turley said that the workers described how the government had placed discarded equipment and hazardous waste in open trenches the length of football fields, then doused them with jet fuel and set them on fire. The highly toxic smoke blowing through the desert base was known as London Fog by workers. Many came down with classic skin and respiratory illnesses associated with exposure to burning hazardous waste. A chief aim of the lawsuits was to discover exactly what the workers had been exposed to so that they could get appropriate medical care. Apparently, it totally proved that the government had acted in violation of federal law, but the government, of course, refused to declassify any information about what they were burning in these trenches. Which is and was horrible because without knowing what exact substance gave all these workers their reactions, it made the doctor's jobs just that much harder in knowing how to treat the workers' illnesses. The burning at Area 51 was most likely a federal crime, but once again these guys got off scot-free because they could hide behind more and more secrecy. As Dana Carvey's church lady would say, well, isn't that special? At number 9 we have a plane pool. Not an airplane swimming pool, but you know how some people carpool to work? Well, it is believed that some of the workers at Area 51 actually plane pool to work. According to the source USA Today, Area 51 employees board an unmarked craft at McCarran International Airport in Las Vegas and are then flown to an undisclosed location, aka Area 51. What is known though is they fly somewhere with the airline known as Janet, which some believe stands for just another non-existent terminal. Hmm, very clever. The unmarked craft is a reportedly a Boeing 737-600s and its official destination is unknown. But back in 2018, Janet was reportedly hiring a new flight attendant. The job posting wrote that applicants must be level-headed and clear thinking while handling unusual incidences and situations. But that's it. That sounds really fishy and kind of intimidating, but if any of you are watching our flight attendants, please go get a job at Janet and then please hit me up. At number 8 we have a mailbox. Okay, so this one isn't exactly inside Area 51, but it's close enough. About 12 miles away from Area 51 is a pair of black mailboxes. According to Bob Lazar, a man who recently made claims he worked at Area 51, but with no real proof, he says that if you want to see some crazy scheduled UFO flight tests, one of the best places to watch them is from these set of mailboxes. Originally it was just a single black mailbox owned by a man named Steve Medlin, but many tourists and alien fans all around the world would come and tamper with his mail as well as destroy the mailbox. I'm guessing to see if any of the mail going to this supposed real person named Steve was actually real or a top secret alien info. So actual non-alien earthborn Steve Medlin put up another mailbox beside it with the name alien on it so anyone hoping to send messages to aliens or get a reply can do their business all the while Steve can get his bills and birthday cards without any trouble. <laughs> uh, poor Steve. At number 7 we have a possible film set? That's right one of the many conspiracy Conspiracy theories surrounding Area 51 is the theory that the original moon landing footage never actually took place on the moon. Many believe it was actually taken at Area 51 with brainwashed astronauts who then returned to normal society believing that they flew all the way to the moon and landed placing the American flag into the grey dusty cheese surface. One of those believers being Bill Casing, author of We Never Went to the Moon, America's 30 billion dollar swindle. Oof. 
lengthy and original title. He not only believes this theory, but he also believes that NASA used lunar meteorites found in Antarctica as stand-ins for moon rocks. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about this one guys, because I think it's pretty obvious that we did go to the moon, and in the off chance we didn't back in 1969, we definitely have now, okay? At number 6, buckle up and let's go off roadin', because we have white trucks. That's right, you remember those crazy intimidating camo dudes I talked about in the first video? Well, for years and years they have been seen roaming in and around the base in white unmarked vehicles. They have been seen in white Jeep Cherokees, Chevrolet Silverados, Ford F-150s, but since 2011 have mostly been driving around in the crazy fun Ford Raptor. Which makes total sense. The Ford Raptor is meant for driving on off-road terrain, as well as a pretty get up and go kind of truck. It's perfect for Area 51 camo dudes, as the land is mostly flat, dirt terrain that if they need to speed off to scare away any trespassers or aliens, they can just hop in their Ford Raptor and give her. As we say here in Canada, they can take her for a rip. I think Ford needs to get on that ad right away. The Ford Raptor, taking Area 51 camo dudes for a rip since 2011. Coming in at number 5 at our halfway point, we have a giant robot. Well, says this one guy. A man named Scott of UFOs Daily has a video online where he inspects Area 51 using Google Earth. He goes in for an extreme close up of an area of land that is filled with random unidentifiable things on the ground and claims it to be new technology. Whatever the hell that means. He zooms in even more and finds what seems to be a giant human shaped silhouette on the ground. He claims it to be a giant robot. I honestly cannot take this one seriously guys because it is such a huge assumption and sure whatever lying on the ground does indeed have the shape of a human human body, but come on, a giant robot? Maybe it's just like a giant men's washroom sign for overhead pilots or aliens or even just a clutter of random crap made into a human shape to troll some alien believer into thinking it's something more than what it is. Yeah, I think it worked. Either way, there is or was a pile of something in the shape of a human at Area 51. That is confirmed, but I don't think it's no longer there because I did just check Google Earth before doing this video and I don't see nothing. So. Whatever. At number 4 we have Big Mouths. Many former employees at Area 51 are now starting to go against their promise of swearing to absolute secrecy. Everyone I'm sure is well aware of Bob Lazar. If you're not then an easy google search and watch of a documentary on Netflix will surely bring you up to speed. Go do that right now. Hey, you back? Good. But other than Lazar, other supposed former employees of the top secret bases are opening up their big mouths and giving away top secret information. One of them being supposed Area 51 veteran James Nose. Nose recalls handling multiple mishaps that were accidentally exposed to the public, such as a crash of a top secret craft that was witnessed by a police officer and a family on vacation. The family apparently took photos and Mr. Nose was in charge of confiscating the photos and telling the family to <laughs> shut up or else. Nose later said that there was no official documentation stating that he worked at the top secret base and that his salary was paid in cash. Hmm. An under the table government paying job? Say what? He also said he never saw any alien activity at the site. <laughs> at the site. Yeah. Okay, whatever you say Jimbo. At number 3 we have underground operations. That's right, if you look at Area 51 on Google Earth like I did, or from above, you may wonder where on earth do they hide all the top secret alien tech and new and never used military equipment? Answer? Probably underground. I'm sure many of us have seen Independence Day and other alien invasion movies, but just like many movies in pop culture, many suspect that most of the testing and actual tech is indeed stored beneath the ground. The deeper you go, the more top secret the project and tech is. One of the conspiracies named John Lear, heir to the Learjet fortune, spun bizarre stories that aliens were being kept underground in camps and being fed mutilated cattle and smaller humans. Gross. There is also no exact proof of any of this, but honestly Area 51 spans over a huge amount of desert and I think if they ever wanted to start a huge underground alien colony. It'd be pretty easy. Coming in at number 2 we have Tic Tacs. No, not the little candies that sometimes freshen your breath unless they're just the tasty orange ones. I'm talking about alien crafts that are in the shape of Tic Tacs. In a podcast episode on the Joe Rogan experience with alien lover Jeremy Corbell and supposed former Area 51 employee Bob Lazar, Lazar opened up about the recent Tic Tac footage that leaked from the 2004 footage and stated that this specific craft actually looked and operated similarly to the craft that he spotted while working at Area 51. Many believe Lazar's story, but with more and more slight details no longer matching up, some would say his story is losing its validity. But one thing is for certain, there are Tic Tac shaped UFOs out there and if we do indeed have any of those craft in our possession on earth, I bet you it's at area 51. And finally, coming in at our number one spot and definitely the weirdest one of them all, we have 
alien architects. Our good friend John Lear, along with his theory that aliens are being hidden and fed underground at Area 51, also quite strongly believes that not only are aliens being housed and fed at the top secret base, they're also helping build the top secret base. To be quite specific, he believes it's the aliens we know as the Greys that are helping assist in the building construction. If this is true, then I bet you the underground buildings and structures are quite advanced. I think we should bring the Greys above ground and let me hire them to do some of the renovations on my apartment because it could use an upgrade. Because the alien god only knows that I can't do it by myself. While this one is yet again another assumption, it is pretty cool. This isn't the first time I've heard something like this. A few years back, I stumbled into a dinner party where a former government worker divulged his knowledge on aliens, specifically the reptilians, and I learned there that they are the ones who made the iPhone. Pretty cool. And oh, and also reptilians are disguised as humans. They're usually white men with blonde, brunette, black, or orange hair. <laughs> so that narrows it down. Either way, it sounds like we may have had quite the helping hand from our friends above. Or so we think. Starting us off with number 10 are the missing ones. So there have been many conspiracy theories and real stories where the CIA has people, they've planned to people, they've made people go missing if they know too much. And I know the first thing that comes to mind when you think about these missing people is that they were obviously killed. I mean, if they're gonna go to the effort of making someone vanish off the face of the earth, then surely they just kill them. But what if they didn't? What if they transported them to a secret underground base at Area 51? We already know there are quite a few underground facilities at Area 51, so why can't a prisoner holding base be one of them? If you're locked up or trapped in Area 51, you're as good as dead according to the CIA anyway, since no one will ever know you're there or be able to find you or save you. It's the perfect non-violent solution where everyone wins, except of course the people locked up in Area 51. Sorry about that. Coming in at number nine, we have alien scientists. So I feel like with the amount of government cover-ups over different plane and military craft crashes and their remains, I definitely believe Area 51 houses aliens and not just the dead remains of all the ones for observation. I'm talking proper communicative aliens that are helping human scientists. This may be far-fetched, but considering people think a one world government operates at Area 51, that government would need a lot of alien tech for whatever their future plans of world domination are. So with that in mind, I think from these alien spacecraft crashes in the past, living aliens were safe from them and now they're here working for the US government either voluntarily or involuntarily. And they probably have Einstein level knowledge and then some, so I hope that the first people we saved when we went in there, I don't know, I haven't checked yet, but you probably would have by the time this goes up, so let me know. At number 8 we have the getaway sources. So say the whole world is going to right now, say there's been like a zombie apocalypse or something more realistic like climate change, tipping point or a food shortage or a disease epidemic or something, or a 2012 scenario where like the earth is literally breaking apart. People need to run, they need to survive and in this scenario forget us mere citizens, they're not worried about us. The people that they'd want saved are the leaders, the president, the very rich and the people with power. And like in the movie 2012, this top 1% had a secret base in China where they would be safe from everything. Similarly, I think the same sort of thing is located in Area 51 in the form of getaway flying saucers. Think about it. The only way to save yourself from this planet, from the horrors of it, is just to simply leave the planet. And what better way to do that than on highly advanced spacecraft with aliens or extraterrestrials you've been making this plan and deal with for the past century. It's like the perfect escape. Us peasants just get to die on Earth and Trump's out here making planet Plut great again. Filling our number 7 slot are the bodies. So we've heard of the BBC crew that got into the base and were basically pointed at with guns and forced to stay on the floor for hours. There are signs all around and leading up to the base saying you'll get shot if you try and trespass onto the base, but of course in kinder words because they can't just outright say we'll shoot you. I suspect there have been many people that have managed to make it into the base and some were definitely shot and that wasn't publicized because it makes the government look bad. Some probably did make it somehow but were hiding on the ground under some major camouflage and I suspect they were either found out and then killed, stayed hiding there because hiding there was still better than trying to leave, getting spotted and then getting shot. All in all, I suspect there are quite a few skeletal remains to be found in Area 51. I feel like the families of those people are still like, where did they go? 
They went to get groceries and they never returned. Now at number six are alien offspring. I feel like any alien still at Area 51 right now is either dead and there for observation or working there involuntarily or locked up. Honestly, let's be real, none of them actually want to be there when they could be at home with their families on planet Glip. Like, let's be real. So with that being said, I'm sure there have been many escape plans executed by them, maybe some even self-sacrifice, not wanting to tell the evil humans their secrets, or because they simply couldn't take being on Earth anymore. So to combat that and ensure the longevity of the alien link, I really believe the heads in charge definitely got them to reproduce and cloned those eggs or fetuses so they'd have a whole armory of aliens if the existing ones successfully left or whatever the hell escaped, died, blew up, self-detonated, I don't really know. Coming in at number 5 are star-crossed lovers. I feel like this has to happen without fail when two people or entities from totally different upbringings and backgrounds meet and hate each other at first and then they fall in love. In this case, I'm talking about an alien and one of the Area 51 workers. So as I previously mentioned, there are most likely aliens living at Area 51 who can communicate with us, so I feel like one of the workers, if not more, who interact with them daily have probably fallen in love with one. You know how it goes, it would have started off like, what the hell are you, and vice versa. Then it would have been like, okay, let me just quickly do my job and then leave. Then it would have moved on to things like telling each other bits and pieces about their own lives. Then in a moment of laughter, one of them realizes, wait, I'm head over heels in love with them. And then comes the confession of love, then the no, we're too different, it'll never work, the CIA won't let you be with me, and my parents on planet Yip Ju will never allow this. And then they get over it and have a secret romance until one of them has to kill the other, Hunger Game style. And if you weren't just sucked into that love story so hard, then you're definitely lying. At number four are dinosaurs. Hear me out, I know you're gonna think I'm ridiculous, but I'm not. Maybe a little bit. So there is no proof that says aliens came after us. If anything, we've seen signs in cave drawings from God knows what BC indicating that alien sightings have been occurring for a long, long time. So who's to say they weren't around during the Cretaceous period and prior? What if they were flying in and out of Earth during the period dinosaurs roamed the Earth? It's not like dinosaurs could record that aliens were visiting, and even if they did somehow, they were wiped out anyway, so there's that. But what if aliens found them interesting? Interesting. What if they're like, ooh, what is that? What if they stole and preserved some eggs here and there like Jurassic Park? If they were smart, honestly, if it was me, I would have gotten one of each gender for each species of dinosaur. And if they did, who's to say they weren't forced to share that at Area 51 after being captured from a crash? What if they wanted to share the knowledge? Pretty sure dinosaurs have a better chance of surviving on Earth where there's oxygen than on planet Zeus where there's none. It could be the alien human dino alliance. I had her for short. Filling like Anim 3 slot are clothes. Okay, so there's a huge debate about whether cloning is ethical or not. I mean, honestly, yes, it is weird. It's creepy to have someone or something that looks exactly the same as something else, yet their personalities are completely different. It's strange, I get it. We've successfully cloned animals throughout history, but humans is something we've never done. Most countries in the world actually ban cloning anyway, so there's that, but there's a bunch of states in the US that don't specifically ban cloning, but ban reproductive cloning. So if human technology couldn't achieve it, maybe alien technology can and has? What if there are clones just walking around Area 51 and we have no idea about it? What if they've cloned prime ministers and other world leaders to make it easier to make appearances when really the real Theresa May is on planet Clintarb? What if? What if they're in there cloning humans and aliens? There are just so many what ifs. Am I a clone? Who knows? Now at number two are the cures. So again, this one is problematic to talk about, but somebody's gotta do it. That someone's gonna be me. <laughs> many people believe that the government injects diseases into the public, which creates an epidemic. Many thought that of the Ebola outbreak in Africa a few years ago as well. Some think the government is behind it to control population numbers, whereas others think they do it to distract from a bigger story going on underneath. Whichever story you wanna believe, if the government created the disease, they also created the cure to it, and I believe those cures are stored in Area 51. And I even believe they have the cure to other things like AIDS and cancer in there as well. You know how they say the pharmaceutical industry makes the most money because they keep you sick? If you weren't sick, they wouldn't be making money, so they don't even want a cure to be found. But what if it's already been found? They're just not releasing it so the economy can gain more money for all these people that do have these illnesses. Sadistic, and it's all there in Area 51. I hope when you guys read it, you found it. And finally, at number one is Osama bin 
Laden. Very controversial, I know, and of course, I don't mean any disrespect by putting him on the list, but again, I'm not gonna pussyfoot around any topic on this channel. So the news broke in May of 2011 that Bin Laden had been found in a compound and killed by a CIA led operation. That's all we know, that's all we got told. And I've been hearing about this conspiracy for years now that he actually wasn't killed. Like, did we ever see his dead body? No, we didn't. They said they identified his body many ways by his height. Well, many people out there are 6'4. Apparently, one of his wives was shouting his name during the raid. And again, that could have just been a body double and someone paying an impoverished woman to just shout a name. It's not that hard. His burial took place at sea and it wasn't documented. According to a US official, there are pictures of his body and the burial, but where they at, though? So, no one other than the people involved saw his apparent assassination and burial. So, people believe that, well, one, they didn't actually kill him. Two, they killed a lookalike, because that could be possible. It's happened in the past. Or three, he's being hidden in Area 51 till his death. So, I mean, there's some food for thought. Mm -hmm.